Ukrainian forces advancing in Russian-occupied territory, pushing further into the southern Kherson region. That area is one of the four regions Russia has claimed as its own after holding sham referendums. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky touting the success of what he calls the fast and powerful advance. So joining me now, Democratic Congressman Jason Crow, member of the House Armed Services and Intelligence Committees, and CNN military analyst Colonel Cedric Layton. Good evening to both of you. Thank you so much. Colonel, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Ukraine appearing to keep up its momentum with these new gains. So give us a lay of the land here. What is happening with the Ukrainian counteroffensive, and why is it so successful? Well, this is really interesting, Don, because what you see, you know, when you look at the map of big Ukraine right here, uh, you've got some significant advances that uh, the Ukrainians were able to make in the area right near Kharkiv. So everything uh, to the north and east of Kharkiv uh, has been uh, part of the scene that they've uh, really been so successful at. And when you look at the advances specifically, uh, you see that the four regions, these are the ones that Putin has said he's going to annex and we're talking about. Luhansk, uh, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson. These four areas right here, look at how much the Russians actually control. They basically control these areas right in through here. But everything that you see uh, is being contested by the Ukrainians. And what's particularly significant about this is, right in this area, they're getting a hold of all of the logistical resupply areas that the Russians have in this area. That's significant because potentially what they can do is they can cut off the Russians and move them out of this area back into Russia itself, which is right here. Now, when you go into the Kherson region, which is in the, in the southern part right here, look at what the Ukrainians have done here. Uh, the object is to get Kherson, which is a Ukrainian city that the Russians occupied at the early part of this war. Uh, right now, they are finally moving forward, and they've gotten villages at, uh, like this one at Velika Oleksandrivka and another one at Davidiv Brid. These are important villages because what they do is this begins the process for the Ukrainians to move around like this. And if they do this, they can cut off the Russian forces that are in Kherson and also on the west bank of the Dnieper. Deeper river, and that is a big deal for for them at this point. Mm -hmm. Congressman, I'm going to bring you in because the U.S. announcing today an additional 625 million dollars in security assistance to Ukraine, but we know the Ukrainians also want long-range rockets from the Biden administration. Do you think the U.S. is providing enough to the Ukrainians? Well, I think we're doing a remarkable job of supporting the Ukrainians, and this administration has moved massive amounts of equipment and weapons uh, to the Ukrainians uh, in really historic speed. But there's more to this story as well. We're also providing intelligence support. We're also providing training. We're providing strategic support and planning support. Uh, there are so many things that we're doing that are putting the position, the Ukrainians in position to win. It's astonishing, actually, what's happening. You know, uh, six months ago, nobody would have given the Ukrainians a chance because on paper, the Russians had every advantage. They were the second largest military in the world. They had every, uh, every advantage just from a uh, analytical perspective. But this shows that paper armies do not fight. Real ones do. So all of the problems that the Russians are encountering are, are showing the, the dark underbelly of the Russian military, but it's also showing the courage, the prowess, the bravery, uh, and the will of the Ukrainians. You know, Colonel, I want to talk about this new aid package. It includes four more high-mobility artillery rocket systems, as well as additional howitzers and ammunition. How important are these weapons to the Ukrainians? Don, they're incredibly important because when you look at a weapon system like the HIMARS, for example, and w here we have a graphic uh, to show, depending on the type of model of HIMARS that you get, it can have a range of up to 300 miles. Now, the Ukrainians right now have a shorter range version of this, uh, and it doesn't go that far, uh, but uh, this is what this is capable of. It, it can also, uh, the other key thing here, and this relates to the ATACM system that is, uh, can be launched from a HIMARS uh, launching system 
system. Uh, but these weapon systems are critically important because what they enable is the targeting of all of the different uh, entities that the Russians have. So if you look, for example, at the map right here and the ranges that are possible, if you have HIMARS located in areas like this, you can, in essence, grab everything in these areas right here. And if you do that, uh, this puts all of the Russian forces in Ukraine at, at risk. And that becomes a critical thing for uh, the Ukrainians to do. And it also advances the goals, of course, of the Western alliance. Congressman, there's a, a Russian diplomat warning today that U.S. military aid, uh, like, like the package announced today, hastens the possibility of a direct military clash between Russia and NATO. Are you worried about this conflict getting bigger than it is, especially given Putin's unpredictability? Well, we always have to be di diligent to Putin's uh, erratic tendencies. Uh, he certainly is desperate now. He's suffering domestic political pressure, the likes of which he has never actually seen during his tenure as president. Uh, so he's starting to do unusual things. So the administration is really looking at all the different scenarios right now. They're looking at the different contingencies. Uh, they have done this methodically and deliberately uh, with an eye towards escalation. Uh, so, you know, we cannot, at the end of the day, though, we cannot allow Vladimir Putin to have veto power over the way we're going to support our partners and our allies. Uh, we have to do what's necessary to put the Ukrainians in a position to win. And this is the way I've always put it. We have to be willing to do what's necessary. That includes the providing of attackums. That includes the providing of advanced fighters and everything that the Ukrainians need to win, that they've shown their ability to use. We have to do what's necessary to put them in the position to win. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're forcing a status quo. And a status quo will, will eventually be won by Russia. Ukrainians have demonstrated over the last couple of months they can win this. They have the momentum. They have the tactical and the strategic capability. Now it's time to finish this off by providing the support that's necessary. Congressman, I have to ask you uh, about this. Ukrainian police claiming today to have uncovered a torture chamber in a town uh, formerly occupied by Russian forces in eastern Ukraine. Police say among the items found was a container full of extracted gold teeth. Local residents say that they heard screaming constantly from the building. As a veteran yourself, what do you think when you see something like this? Well, during the invasion of Iraq, when I was a paratrooper, we saw these torture chambers. We saw uh, the, you know, all of the signs of the history of the torture of the Saddam Hussein regime. It's terrible. It's horrific. It's, it's the worst of human nature. And unfortunately, it's happening uh, with um, a terrible, horrific prevalence by the Russians in Ukraine. They are committing war crimes. Uh, they are uh, doing brutal terrorist things. They're using rape as a we uh, weapon of war. They are murdering innocent civilians. They are torturing and executing people. They are filling max mass graves. And the only way it'll stop, if, if, if the Ukrainians stop it with our support, uh, so we have to make sure that's getting done. And that's also why, as a member of the Intelligence Committee, I'm leading an effort to, to create a coordinator within the intelligence community to actually gather all the evidence of all of these war crimes so it can be eventually used for prosecution so we can bring these folks to justice. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Colonel. I appreciate it. You bet.